My name is Lubna Saif Abbas and I am from Yadawi and Yadawi is a multidisciplinary platform uh, which focuses on uh, different experiences, education, materials, space, innovation, collaboration, design, production. And what does Yadawi mean? Yadawi means of the hands. Of the hands. So the word Yed means hand and Yadawi means of the hand. hands, hand-like. Okay. You were born in Indiana. I'm right? a Hoosier. You're a Hoosier. Yes, right? I'm a Kuwaiti made in the USA. Yeah. Proud to be both. Yes. And um, we were in the Midwest and I and in, in the, and you know I was I'm a 60s child and so everything that we did especially in those days where, and the family that I came from in Kuwait um, they were all makers. My grandmother sold her wares from her home. Um, my grandfather sold carpets and so we were always living in a very tactile space. So your first experience is with learning from them. Absolutely, absolutely. So everything that you know was done by hand, and the house was this was this tinkering kind of place, and uh, and that's what we grew up with. Right. Yeah, yeah. And how did you get to back to Kuwait? Oh, well, there were two two times I came back. The first time I came back as a child, my dad had graduated with his PhD, and so we came back to Kuwait for the first time. And, uh, and then I left back to the States as a teenager, uh, graduated from high school, and then went to college. Originally I was studying pre-law, and then I had an epiphany, and I decided to do graphic design with art history. Right. And then... In Indiana? We, in, uh, in, at American University American. in Washington, D.C. Okay. And then, as I was getting ready to do my master's, of course, the events of 1990-91 unfolded. We were, you know, we had to deal with the occupation and the invasion of Kuwait. And at that time, I quit school for a year to dedicate to Kuwait's liberation and the rebuilding. And I was honored. I was asked to be one of the first nine women in Kuwait's history. We volunteered and we were attached to the United States Army. I was attached to the 199th JAG and uh, we were trained at Fort Dix. And I graduated on the day of liberation. And I got back here on the 7th of March, and I was with a group of wonderful people, our American counterparts and our Kuwaiti volunteers, and we, uh, we, we were doing war crimes documentation. I was only supposed to be here for two weeks, and to get back to D.C. and continue a master's program in design and textile design. And as soon as my, my two feet hit the tarmac and the smoke was billowing, I knew that I was going to be here and that was a few years back a few decades back and I'm really glad because I wanted to be here to contribute all of the things that I learned all over my experiences all over the world I wanted to be, give back to my community and that's why I'm here and that's why I established Yadawi with my with my partners and my counterparts and the team that's great yeah. so let's talk about Yadawi and some of the things you make here okay yeah and how, how you started a workshop <laughs> yes right? a well studio. absolutely and one of the challenges that we have in Kuwait and we, and you can see that so many people are overcoming these challenges is, is that it's really hard to find spaces to work in and so what we started doing is, is, is we ended up converting 150 square meters from our family home basement to the Yadawi project for over 12 years. And when we started with jewelry making, I, 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 I took a workshop uh, in 2003 uh, to melt the glass because I had visited Murano as a child. And I said that this had to be a key component of, of it. And we couldn't do that in the basement for a whole variety of reasons. So we were really lucky. We got uh, we we brokered um, a lovely partnership with the Dar al Athar Islamia Yarmouk, and we're really thankful for. That's a museum. Yes, yeah, so it's an Islamic museum, and they have been home to many different cultural activities, and they were allowed uh, they allowed us to um, work with them, lease space, and now we're introducing the lamp work program. Uh, we started in July. It took us six months to build. Wow. And we bring artists from all over the world. We have artists from the United States and all over the world coming and helping Hamad and I establish this program. So it's a really, really cool program because it's got neon. We're starting neon, which takes a lot of work, fusing, jewelry design, and combining right. creative industries all under right. one roof. Oops. Yes. So this is the kind of thing that you're, you're yes. doing there? Yes. And, and I call this the joy, the joy bead. And this is a traditional technique. I'm using Murano 
glass and, um, and the torch. Our torches um, are state-of-the-art torches. We have a 12-torch setup. We have the fusing kilns as well. And we allow people to take the workshop and then, and this, we're unique. Not many people do this. After you take the workshop, you get five hours of free torch time. So you come in and we give you the technical support. And then, should you want to keep on going, you just rent time, 20 hours, and you can use those 20 hours over three months. Designers who want to come in and collaborate, people who are now, we're now collaborating with woodworkers from Maker Faire. Uh, we've got some tool makers, where hopefully they're going to work with us to start designing tools that are for Yedawi. And this is an amazing way to be able to um, springboard the project. That's great. That's yeah. Great. You want to tell us about that? Yeah, well, we're also looking at traditional iconic um, objects. So we, this is called a marash, where you put the rose water and traditionally, I'm out of rose water, but you traditionally, when guests come, you give them the rose water. So Muhammad you worked this to, 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 to cleanse your hands yes, whenever yeah. you're, you know, before and after a meal. And so Muhammad took the traditional design and he worked it in borosilicate. And so, and because because it's all about thinking green, this Maker Fair, we are showcasing all of our green theme products. So yes. Yeah. So, just a, uh, what does this mean in Kuwaiti culture? You know, there, you mentioned like the traditions, and there's also looking forward, yes. you know, bringing it into the future. Yes. One of the things that we saw as a great opportunity is, is that, and not many people knew, knew, are aware of this from the advent of oil, but before then, Kuwait was so resilient. It was a very harsh environment, but Kuwaitis, they used everything. Nothing went to waste. Everything was used. People were doing all of these things from their homes. So they were, you know, predating eBay and predating Etsy. And of course, with the advent of oil, we've been really blessed with, un, with, you know, with a really thriving economy. But folks started forgetting how to use their hands. And because we have, we're very, you know, we're, we're very blessed that we have so many other people doing things for us. And so there, we lost that connection. And you also see this in the United States. I grew up with, you know, shop everywhere. We need to have the globe covered with spaces dedicated to what Maker Faire is doing all year long. Right, exactly.